Eat your heart out, Deadpool. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 times anime broke the fourth wall. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the times when characters decided to break the immersion of the medium by addressing the audience directly or just generally showing an understanding that they're starring in an anime. Get ready to go full meta with a few spoilers along the way. Stop doing that! Number 10, I'm the main character, Oran High School Host Club. Tamaki is well known for making melodramatic, grandiose, and otherwise overblown displays when it comes to his obvious infatuation for Haruhi. They're looking at you because you are lovely. Don't you worry. I promise that I will protect you no matter what. At one point, he decides to let the rest of the host club know exactly what the status quo is. This anime is obviously a romantic school comedy. Haruhi and I are the main characters. He's the protagonist. She's the love interest, and they're all starring in a romantic comedy. And the rest of them are the homosexual supporting cast. Too bad the others don't take too kindly for this and get back at him later down the line. That's bad hosting etiquette, Tamaki. Number 9, the narrator, Space Dandy. Why are we even talking about this? Can't we let the narrator do the prologue first? Anime has had no shortage of narrators over the decades. That singular voice that assists with both recaps and exposition, even when it doesn't seem warranted. Like that one, and those, and all of them, far too many to name. Turns out the captain of the Aloha Oe wants in on the gig. After the show's narrator dishes out a rather dismissive explanation as to the crew's current situation, Dandy and Cutie discuss how easy the job must be and how envious they are that they don't get a chance to kick back like the looming voice does. Wow, he really phoned that one in, didn't he? No kidding. How do I get that job? Ah oh, well, boobies and cosmic explosions it is. Number 8, 100. The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. A new manga reaching 100 chapters is a pretty big deal, certainly something worthy of celebration. Though, it's fair to say not many would dedicate a whole episode of its anime adaptation to celebrating that milestone. Then <laughs> again, Psyche isn't your average guy. Playing into the show's signature fast-paced wit, Psyche starts to see that everyone and everything is constantly repeating the number 100. And yes, by the episode's end, they managed to say 100, 100 times. You don't need to be a psychic to know that the fourth wall got a telepathic ass-kicking. Number 7, The End, Bobo 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 Bobo. Coming from a show whose main character uses his nose hairs to win battles, we were expecting something pretty spectacular from the finale. Now let's go, go, go! Outrageous, crude, and nonsensical for sure, but spectacular nonetheless. Surprise, surprise, Bobobo managed to trip us all up on the way to the finish line. Bobobo's fight for the happiness of hair everywhere continues, but alas, we've run out of episodes. Right before the final clash, it's brazenly announced that the series has come to a close, much to the shock and horror of the rest of the cast. It may have ended with a whimper instead of a bang, but at least the anime took the fourth wall down with it. The sign says it's the end! Are you kidding? This is how our show ends? <laughs> Number 6, suitable for family viewing, Bleach. Well, that's certainly one way to gloss over a plot hole. After managing to defeat the psychotic Sayel Aporo, Captain Kurotsuchi tends to the important matter of bringing his Lieutenant Nemu back from near death after she fell victim to the Espada. How so? By doing something that looks incredibly similar to the Downward Dog. Is he reviving her? <laughs> Naturally, both Renji and Uryu are horrified by this, 
the latter even calling him out for doing something the audience wasn't even allowed to see. What idiots! Don't turn this back on us! Admit it, you did something to her just now you couldn't even show the audience! What are you talking about, you Neanderthal? Kurotsuchi's response is both hilarious and ironic. Not very often you see a mad scientist with family values. I never do anything that isn't suitable for family viewing. Get your minds out of the gutter! Number 5, Team Rocket, Pokemon. Blasting off at the speed of light, this motley trio of criminals have been dishing out the sass and breaking the fourth wall for decades now. I think we can fast forward through this. Honestly, we're a bit spoiled for choice given the numerous times that they have torn through the barriers of the show. My nose, what happened? The stink dissolved off my face! Yeah, I almost forgot! The cartoonies never gave me a nose! They've declared their plans to the audience, refused to allow anyone to interrupt their motto, spoken out against the narrator, proved to be very knowledgeable about the show's tropes, they've even directly addressed the video games at one time. We're the ones poised to pocket those diamonds and pearls. Hey, that sounds like a good name for a game! <laughs> <laughs> Forget capturing Pikachu, these guys need to go into satire. And when we do, we'll be the new stars of this cartoon. Number 4, Hitagi's voice actress, Bakimono Gatari. As fans are no doubt aware, this franchise more often than not steps all over the fourth wall and uses its remains to craft beautiful, weird, and in some cases, psychedelic scenes that not many can hope to match. However, none have ever truly surpassed the moment where Hitagi went all in and openly addressed just how awesome her Japanese voice actress really is, even giving an example. Koyami is rightly confused, while the rest of us are left impressed at how talented Chiwa Saito is. Number 3, watch this folks, Bastard. Pretty much the last place you'd expect to see fourth wall breaks of any kind would be in an anime that's essentially a half decent D&D campaign. Fulfill the covenant of ancients and answer my summons! <laughs> Albeit one that stars Steve Bloom as a cocky ninja master. Heard about Dark Schneider. So I've brought my army of 2,000 ninja. During the final battle, it looks like Gara is struggling against his foe, leading to one of his companions to ask why he's taking so long with the fight, to which the ninja eloquently responds, What's the point of winning a battle if you're off screen when you do it? Watch this, folks. Nobody puts Bloom in the corner. Number 2, Part 3 is over. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders. You're gonna love a villain who has so much confidence in his victory that he declares an end to the entire series. After knocking Jotaro and company off the road, the Wheel of Fortune stand user appears to kill the young Joestar by setting his entire body ablaze. In his gloating, he announces that part three of the franchise has concluded. <laughs> Only for Jotaro to reappear, very much alive, stating that no one else could play his character, all before Aura 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 ing him into oblivion. <laughs> Number 1 Attacking the Author, Gintama. The show has taken the likes of satire, parody, and fourth wall breaking and turned them into a collective masterpiece. <laughs> Calling out real world events and other anime are just part of the course for the likes of Gintoki. However, nothing has ever come close to the time when Otai, who had become enraged over her poor character poll ranking, decided to vent her anger out on the physical manifestation of Gintama's author. As you might have guessed, 
the After Effects essentially sent the anime hurtling into the void. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.